The wheel of time turns, and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Though the world looked markedly different in the years before the breaking, the devastation wrought by male Aes Sedai drastically reshaped continents and oceans, with ten human nations emerging in the Westlands from the ashes of their fallen civilization. In time, humanity recovered as best they could, yet the era of plentiful peace was no more, leading to violence, division, and competition for resources, with these ten nations rising, falling, and transforming throughout the Third Age, forming new realms in the Free Years, until the legendary hero Arthur Hawkwing united nearly all the Westlands under his rule, even extending his domain beyond the sea to Shan Chan, the faraway continent of the West. Yet when Hawkwing died without an heir in 994FY, his empire fell to infighting, as every would-be ruler in the Westlands attempted to claim the mantle of successor, or else carve out their own independent territory. From 994 to 1117FY, the War of the Hundred Years wrought chaos and death throughout the land. Until at last, the fighting ended, leaving 24 nations and 3 independent cities in place of the former empire. Over the next thousand years, the realms of Almoth, Goaban, Karalain, Ironbell, Kintara, Moredo, Marhadan, Hardon, Mosara, and Malkir were lost, while Aradoman, Andor, Kyrian, Tarabon, Gildon, Amadisia, Altara, Mirandi, Ilion, and Tyr survived, along with the borderland nations of Shinar, Arafel, Kandor, and Saldeia. There were also the city-states of Farmading, Mayen, and Tarvalin. Established in 1096 FY, Aradoman was created through an alliance of powerful rulers and wealthy merchants during the War of the Hundred Years, with their first king, Shalon Lazari, ascending to the throne in 1116 FY. Rather than inheriting the throne, kings were elected by the Council of Merchants and could be deposed when a strong majority of 75% voted in opposition. Claiming independence soon after Arthur Hawkwing's death in 994 FY, Eshara Kassalane was crowned the first Queen of Andor, establishing an unbroken line of female rulers which lasted over a thousand years. Sitting upon the Lion Throne in the capital of Camelin, the rulers of Andor were closely allied to the city-state of Tarvalin, establishing a tradition where the female heir was sent to study with the Aes Sedai before succeeding as ruler. A powerful realm in the center of the Westlands, Andor was the oldest, largest, and most populous nation of the New Era, with the greatest, best-trained army outside the borderlands. Aside from the famous, beautiful city of Camelin, Andor was also home to a great white bridge from the Age of Legends, built from abnormally strong white glass which resisted nearly all forms of damage. Though much of the realm remained loyal to the Queen throughout its history, the far western region of the two rivers bordering the Mountains of Mist eventually grew estranged from the capital, with its people unaware they were part of a larger nation. Having forgotten much of their history, the two rivers was once known as the Kingdom of Manetherin, with the village of Emmons Field rising from the site of their last battle, where King Aemon fought to the death, defending their realm from Trolloc invasion. Founded after the Trollic Wars, the nation of Tova, ruled by a group of noble counselors, eventually fell to Arthur Hawkwing, and following his death, attempted to re-establish their independence. Yet this was not to be, as dissidents assassinated the last descendants of the ruling counselors, sparking a civil war that left Matrain Comkill as first king of Kyrian, a nation named after its capital city. A realm whose politics centered around the game of houses, assassinations, betrayals, and plots of all kinds were commonplace, with their rulers often putting their petty schemes above the well-being of the people and even their own best interests. With their people claiming a heritage that extended back to the Age of Legends, Tarabon was founded by three nobles in 1006 FY, who once ruled the regional government under Arthur Hawkwing. After the fall of the Empire and death of one of these nobles, the remaining two agreed to share power, with Lady Tazenya Narenhal ruling as Queen while Lord Heron Masid took the title Panarch. By the year 500 NE, these leadership positions were divided exclusively by gender, with a male rising to become King while a female Panarch was elected by an assembly of lords. 
After failing to re-establish the old kingdom of Dolan, a group of prominent nobles from four major houses founded the nation of Gildan in 1109 FY, with Kirin Almeida becoming its first king, sat upon the light-blessed throne, while the others served in the Crown High Council. Established in 1023 FY, Amadicia was founded by Lord Sental Ramoth, a direct descendant of the last king of Karandor, which fell during the War of the Second Dragon from 939 to 943 FY. Though Lord Ramoth originally tried to re-establish Karandor in 1015 FY, the nation was no longer recognized as a unifying power, and so he created the new realm of Amadicia in its place. Though Amadician rulers once held great power, their authority diminished over the years as the independent military organization known as the Children of the Light established their headquarters in the realm's capital city of Amador. Enemies of the Dark One and everything they associated with him, the Children of the Light were the true power in Amadicia, making it the only nation where Aes Sedai and channeling the One Power was entirely outlawed. A successor state to the nation of Shiota, established after the Trollic Wars, Altara was founded by Lord Madden Todande in 1112 FY, but by the year 102 of the New Era, fell into a state of decentralized authority lasting over eight centuries, with no house able to claim the Throne of Winds for more than two generations, leaving power in the hands of local rulers rather than a single monarch. A small nation ruled by a figurehead monarch, Mirandi was founded in 1047 FY by Lady Catherine du Catalan Acorail, who ruled for less than a year before she was assassinated. For centuries, they rotated through a succession of short-lived kings and queens until their authority was all but gone, with true power remaining in the hands of local lords who swore allegiance to their monarch only to the extent it was necessary to deter invasion from foreign powers. When Lord Nikolai Mersenios den Balin captured the city of Ilion in 1094 FY, he founded a powerful nation of the same name, becoming their first king wearing the laurel crown. With their ruler advised and his power checked by a council of nine and assemblage, whose members were elected by merchants and guilds, Ilion was known for hosting the Great Hunt of the Horn, a famous event where mighty adventurers attempted to find the Horn of Valir, an ancient relic from a previous age which had the power to summon the greatest heroes of history from the dead so they might fight for the forces of light. Ruled by a council of high lords, Tyr was founded soon after the death of Arthur Hawkwing, becoming one of the richest nations in the Westlands, though its wealth was concentrated exclusively with the aristocratic elite, who viewed commoners as lesser beings, drawing a stark contrast between the classes, which acted and dressed differently while subject to separate laws and traditions. A realm with an important and ancient heritage, Tyr was mentioned as a part of the Dragon Reborn prophecy, saying, The Stone of Tyr will never fall till Kalindor is wielded by the Dragon's hand. The Stone of Tyr will never fall till the people of the Dragon come. The men and women of the nation, therefore, believed it their duty to defend the royal fortress called the Stone of Tyr and protect the Crystal Sword Kalindor in order to prevent the Dragon from returning to power. Knowing the importance of the Borderland region, the five northern governors who ruled under Arthur Hawkwing met after his death and agreed to form the five allied nations of Saldea, Kandor, Arafel, Shinar, and Malkir in order to protect the south from the great blight beyond the Mountains of Doom. Spending centuries fighting Trollocs and other shadow spawn who served the Dark One, the warriors of the Borderlands comprised the greatest, most well-trained armies in the Westland. However, after a thousand years on the front lines of battle, the nation of Malkir was lost in 955 NE as a result of internal strife and betrayal leading to their invasion and conquest by Shadow Spawn. Then there was the city-state of Farmatting, an ancient land with a history dating back to the Age of Legends, where a magic Terangrial called the Guardian prevented Aes Sedai from using the One Power. As for the city-state of Mayen, they declared their independence in 1004 FY, claiming that Arthur Hawkwing's grandson, Tiern Sur Paindrag Mashera, previously thought deceased, was in fact alive, hailing him as First Lord of Mayen. Though Tyr made several attempts to conquer the city, they were ultimately unsuccessful, allowing Mayen to remain independent. 
Finally, there was Tarvalin, home to the female Aes Sedai of the Westlands, ruled by the Amarlin Seat, an ancient and powerful realm founded in the year 98 after breaking, which remained independent for the entirety of its existence, even resisting the might of Arthur Hawkwing, who besieged but never conquered the city. The location where Initiate Aes Sedai trained to use the One Power, the women of Tarvalin were the most powerful people in the Westlands often manipulating other rulers and nations by acting as diplomats, advisors, healers, spies, and warriors in order to subtly or blatantly impose their will upon them. Beyond the mainland, throughout the western and southern oceans, the Sea Folk, or Atha'an Mier, ruled over a number of islands including Isle Dashar, Isle Samara, Isle Jafar, Tremalking, Kaim and Syndiking, though they spent most of their lives living aboard ships, captained by a female sailmistress who led the crew and chose their destination, while a male cargo master, often husband to the sailmistress, was in charge of security and conducted trade negotiations. Then there was the female Windfinder, acting as a second in command to the sailmistress, who wielded the one power, using their abilities to manipulate and predict the weather. Male channelers, however, were given the choice of drowning themselves or being left on a barren island without food or water. The Sea Folk were also divided into larger clans, where the leadership structure mirrored that aboard their ships, with a female wave mistress in command of their people, while a male swordmaster was in charge of security and a windfinder acted as advisor. This pattern was then repeated again for their people as a whole, who were led by a mistress of ships serving as their queen, while a master of blades was charged with their defenses, and a windfinder as counselor. Though the sea folk were considered exotic but well known by most mainlanders, few realized that another segment of society existed for those traveling traders, as the Amayar were a land-dwelling people who lived secluded lives of peace on their island homes growing crops, raising livestock, and manufacturing goods, which were then sold by their ocean-loving counterparts. Wanting nothing to do with ships or travel, the Amayar were happy to stay on their islands and submit to the rule of the sea folk, who for the most part treated them justly and left them to govern their own affairs. Though the Sea Folk and Amayar were in many ways polar opposites, this worked in their favor, as neither had anything the other wanted, resulting in a long history of cooperation and peaceful coexistence, with no hint of rebellion or warfare between them. Similar to the Dragon Reborn prophecies of the mainland, the Sea Folk had the Jendai prophecies, which foretold that the Koromor would one day lead their people to greater glory and domination over all the seas of the world. Having no proper homeland, the traveling Tuatha'an, or Tinkers, were a nomadic group of traders who lived a pacifist existence following the way of the leaf, while claiming they were searching for the song, though for most of their history, no one truly understood what that meant. Unloved by most peoples, the Tinkers wore bright colors and were always joyful, singing and dancing at every opportunity. In addition to all these human realms and peoples, the Ogier race also called the Westlands their home, living in steadings, ancient secluded regions of peace where Aes Sedai could not channel the One Power. These slow, intelligent, thoughtful, and long-lived Ogier traveled through magic hidden way gates gifted to them during the Age of Legends by male Aes Sedai, which allowed them to move quickly and quietly throughout the continent. Though Ogier were master craftsmen who built many of the great cities of the Westlands, their true passion was for trees and the natural world, with some possessing great abilities like tree singing which could encourage and manipulate plant growth. Rarely seen by other humans, most Ogier prefer to live the entirety of their lives in the steading with no real desire to travel or visit other lands. In fact, their connection to these homelands was so strong that should they spend too much time away, they were inflicted with a deep longing which weakened them and eventually led to their deaths. Though the many peoples and cultures of the Westlands established great and prominent realms, nothing could endure forever. Therefore, these regions continue to transform over the ages as there are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the Wheel of Time. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Parachado, Delacruz the Freed, Average Soul the Healer, and Kyle Blitzord. 
If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and check out the links below. Or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.